Working hard or hardly working? Today, we're not gonna lie. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of NGL People where we talk about things in life that matter. I'm Zelani. And I'm Natasha. And today we're going to talk about work productivity and flexibility. December last year, CNA published an article about how every uh, employer in uh, mm. our country right, uh, needs to be prepared to provide flexible work arrangements for all their employees. Yeah, so it's very interesting in this day and age where um, we have the option to request for flexible work arrangements. But I also wonder, you know, is this going to impact um, how we can be productive at work? And today, right, we actually have the privilege of inviting an uh, employer as well as an employee with flexible and even remote working arrangements to share their experience with us. So can you introduce yourselves to our, our viewers yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Wesley. Currently, I'm working um, in sales at a company within the digital assets industry, also mm. uh, affectionately known as the crypto industry. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it states in black and white in my contract that I am to work remotely in Asia at all times. Because everyone's based wow. in like New York. Yeah, right? um, there's no teammates, office for you yeah, to go to. There's no office for me to show up at. Wow. Yeah. And I'm the only person in my company, like in Asia also. Oh. So I feel like it's every Gen Z's like dream to be a right digital now. nomad, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess there there's a license to be a digital nomad, but I don't mm. I don't really consider myself as one. I, I'm still like very much based in Singapore. Yeah. Mm. Zeo, how about you? Hi, my name is Zeo and I run a, a web and mobile app agency here in Singapore. The eight of us are divided across three countries. Oh. So there's already some kind of flexibility in that. Yeah. Yes. Largely remote working, although for each team, if there are groups of people, we actually come together two days a week. Yeah, ah. so that we have some FaceTime each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you guys like your work arrangements? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, I've been in this a similar arrangement for I think almost one and a half years now. I feel like I am more effective than normal because I can creatively allocate my time. Creatively. Right? Creatively allocate my time, right? Not just the time. I think it's also the location, right? Because um, my, my work is almost like 50% travel. Mm. Flexibility. Um, it means I have more time to do the things I want, but also, you know, uh, in unconventional times I'm working, like at night or like weekends. Yeah, because mm. sometimes the conferences just happen on weekends, then, you know, right. it's just got to be that way. Yeah. So you just manage, like, when's your off days, your rest and all yeah. that. So I, yeah, so I, I actually think if I, if I were to like, I guess lock all my actual hours, it's probably more than the normal nine to five. Probably, yeah, yeah. more than 40 hours. I think Zeo likes but, to hear that as an employer. Yeah, yeah but, but you see, I, I also <laughs> cut out the... <laughs> I mean, honestly, those people in the office, right? Like, you're not sitting at a desk, like, locked in for, like, all eight, nine hours yeah, of your working you time. Breaks, right? yeah, like, you will take breaks, right? Yeah, you take breaks. And for me, that's, like, almost non-existent. When I'm working, I'm really working. When I'm not, yeah, then I'm not. Yeah. So then I feel like I'm, I actually have more effective hours than I would usually have. So to you, flexibility increases your productivity, lah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think it would for anyone that likes their job and believes in, in what right. they're doing. Yeah. Okay, so mm. I, I post you all this scenario, especially for sale as an employer, right? So while we were preparing for this episode, we actually saw this TikTok. So this TikTok, right, was like a, it was like a recording of a Zoom meeting. Um, and basically while the Zoom meeting was happening, right, one of the employees was taking the meeting while getting a manicure done. So she was <laughs> at a nail salon, right? Then like the lady buffing her nails and then like her boss was talking. Then she like, Turn on her camera some more. So everybody she And she was presenting something. It was... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so she, she was the one like, actually presenting the agenda and like talking about that part, right? Interesting. Then when her employer asked her, are you at a nail salon? She's like, oh uh, yeah, see? Look at my nails. They're so nice. <laughs> uh, but this is like remote working and I am working just from a nail salon. Yeah, so, and then she, she said that, oh, it's very conducive. There's no one around. Yeah, it's very quiet. She could actually focus. Yeah. But so the bottom line is that <laughs> she was taking a work meeting while getting a manicure done because supposedly remote working. La, so really still working. Yeah. So what's your take on that? You know, how far is too far when it comes to flexible work arrangements? Let, let the boss say first. Oh yeah, I want to hear the boss first. say first, yeah. 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 <laughs> if that was your employee. Um, yeah, I think I would be like a boss. <laughs> Can I have some time with you after that? <laughs> Let's talk about this. See me after class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so personally, I think in our team, we have no problem that they go for their errands if they have to do it during their office hours. We, we love flexibility. But for me, the video uh, as as... I mean, it's meant for comedy value, right? Yeah. As much yeah. as that goes, right? Uh, 
personally, I would ask, um, is that respectful to the rest of the team members? Yeah. Yeah. So quite weird to do this while everybody is looking at you. Mm. Yeah. And in my line of work, we do a lot of like sharing of our screens, mm. discussing how this should go there or how's the user flow like. Mm. So can't really do that. And and um, if you are going to present something, you might also need to take down notes from response and stuff like that. So well, she cannot mm. take down because. She, yeah. Uh, Maybe thanks to her, the many curries helping her to take down. <laughs> she got secretary. Or oh, she yeah, using, she's like using like chat, her chat GPT <laughs> to yeah. record the meeting. Oh, that's quite sick. Wow. Very resourceful. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if her camera is off, then we can't really tell. You won't know that and, she's in there. Yeah, she's yeah. performing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like um, cutting my hair, right, um, on my off day at uh, a hair salon and I saw the exact same thing like people were taking work calls yes. mm. yeah but it was uh, it, they didn't have to turn on their video yeah, yeah. so I was like actually quite a good use of time uh, because when you're doing your steam treatment for 30 minutes you can't do anything else that's fair it's yeah. a, it's a <laughs> CNA article uh, they say work from home the H stand for hair salon oh, <laughs> hair salon. oh. Like you just do your work there <laughs> okay but for Zil for, for you it really is about um uh, respecting keeping la. in mind yeah. that there's a team also it's, also, it's yeah. not just uh, it's not just about your own um work effectiveness mm. Mm. yeah in, in the context la. Mm. yeah i mean i've taken calls while having my hair cut also but it's because <laughs> the client need to speak to me and that's fine yeah, uh, yeah. It doesn't affect but the for this party. if it's a scheduled um internal uh, meeting and all it, yeah. it's a bit different yeah <laughs> like the beauty of flexible work arrangements right is that uh it allows you to divide your time as you please Right. But I don't think it allows you to divide your mind as you please. So like mm, what I mean is that okay. during working hours, you can do other things. Mm. But I think while you are working, you cannot do other things. So for example, the, the TikTok we're talking about is that they are at a meeting, then they, uh, you know, uh, at a nail salon, things like that. And I mean, from what I saw in the video, right, they have to like sometimes see the nail, sometimes say, oh, this one a bit more colorful. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> actually. Right. But that's my guess. <laughs> that's my guess, right? They might have to give comments, they have to supervise sometimes, right? So it actually divides your attention. Yeah. So, so the I, issue I is the like, multitasking. La. Correct. So so actually, oh. like for me, right? Like there are many times where, especially let's say I'm moving to meet client A to go client B, mm. right? And then I'm on a MRT or I'm on a Grab, right? I will also do work or like take calls in those situations. Mm. But of course, I'm really sitting down on a car, don't have to do anything, mm. right? And I can take the call. So my time is creatively split up, divided, but my attention isn't. But I think once we start to allow our attention to be divided, honestly, like the one, whether you're in office or at home, right, is, is, your, is your fault already, right? Because, mm. yeah. I mean, there are also people that, that, you know, I mean, we've all seen, right? People like put the Netflix around of them, then sit at the desk, <laughs> this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah then yeah. No, no matter where you are, it's also wrong. So yeah. it's not so much about that. Uh, True, la. so not yeah. an issue about flexibility or not. La. It's just yeah. whether you are fully present. Yeah, focus, to be. yeah. No, but yeah. I agree. La. I think it's yeah. about honoring the time that we have set aside to discuss certain things. And mm. like, if, um, I mean, you can argue that like, while I'm getting a manicure, I'm not doing anything. And yeah. like, my mind can be fully present. But I feel it's also like visually... I don't know whether it's the most Optics, respectful right. yeah, of yeah. your other team members who are like fully present, then they see the auntie down there buffing your nails. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, honestly a bit distracting. Like, a bit, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to find out from uh, both of you, what does um what does work productivity look like for you? So to be honest, there was a time where I have this uh, employer's anxiety. Yeah, so thinking about the hours rather than the productivity of the time mm. spent. La. So questions I'll ask is, are they really working? How come yeah. they are not responding? Oh, are they no, online? Right. Are they offline? And yeah. this like they is blue tick you, is it? Never blue, even tick you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not even sure if they're reading You guys it. use like the Slack yeah, or Skype or something. Uh, they can see the green dot, is it? Okay. Kind of we can see them bit online. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. We, we use Discord. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so they, yeah. new age. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to fit into the web yeah. tree scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see them online, but they don't reply your messages, is it? Uh, they could be offline or oh, they yeah, they do not respond if they're online. Yeah. So those those mm. are the anxiety employer would have. La. So so that was that was a, a long time ago. Now, over time, I think I grew to understand that under a remote working environment, mm. um, it might not be sensible or wise to focus on that. Yeah. But uh, shouldn't you be more worried that they reply too fast? It's like, huh? you're not busy with your work on it. It's like not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just waiting for the for the boss to message. Right? Yeah, I wonder whether work productivity, uh, one of the factors is um, you being available when you are yeah. supposed to be working. Okay, yeah. so to you, right? What is proper work etiquette during like remote mm. working? 
Hmm. So uh, currently, we focus a lot more on what we want to deliver for the week. Okay, yeah. outcomes. And, and yeah, outcomes. And our work is team-based one. There is yeah. no like, okay, this is your KPI, that's your KPI. Yeah. Mm. It's more oh, like so together. So it's a team uh, deliverable, team yes. KPI. Yes. So okay. we have, uh, well, well, we have two parts, right? One is projects. One yeah. is after the project, how do we maintain or what? Yeah. How do mm. we stabilize it? So yeah. for the projects, it's always about planning milestones and these milestones shift along the day. So uh, what we do is every week we look at for this week, what are the things within this milestone that we want to clear? Yeah, and how do we work together as a team? Yeah, so towards that count in terms of productivity, it's just every day we are chonging together, lo, sprinting together. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So what then, does that look like? Like task, delegate, everybody just do what you need to do, then we reconvene. Yeah. So uh, it really depends on the f- where we are at the project. Oh. So we stop talking about like how, what hours are you spending here. It's more like oh. um, this week we are about 70-80% through our you know, uh, things that So that's that how you do. track progress. Yes. So maybe that's 50 items. Oh. Uh, so we got to uh, prioritize them and, mm. and together with the team decide, okay, for this week, how many items you want to clear. Mm. Yeah, so leadership will be looking at that and say, hey guys, we maybe we want to focus a bit less. This is being blocked right now. We want to do that instead. Uh, so someone is like painting that for wow. yeah, correct. It's really like a project manager mm. yeah. like charting the, the team forward. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so there was a time where you were not like flexible and then you all became flexible or have you always been flexible? Um, there was a time where we worked in office together yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. So I think the focus was less goal centric yeah. and more Clock your of, hours, uh. yeah. Clock your hours. How was that for the team? Um, I would say it's more chaotic. Uh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, harder it, to manage? Uh, not as results driven. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Then people feel like they are in uh, more like a, the machine or they are trying to just deliver their time, right? Mm. Yeah. So when we orient it towards results based, I think it becomes better for everybody. So do you find that then your workers lack that kind of ownership and initiative? Because it's very driven by the manager to kind of delegate tasks. And then in some sense, as a worker, I can just complete my task. Mm. But what does it look like to then take initiative in my work? Mm. So not, not really, because the, in this case, the project leader paves the way forward, right? Mm. But there are still a lot of gaps along the way. Right. For example, if you talk about design, right? Um, when we are looking through a certain set of uh, user interfaces, we could see gaps that are there that is not raised along mm. the way. So the designer can see that. Mm. So ownership in that case means they they raise that to us. In fact, we were so many times we 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 had to deal with it because it was raised from the ground up. Mm. That's one. Second mm. is uh, as an agency, we don't just work on a single project. Mm. Actually, yeah, the yeah, hard truth, task, right? yeah, yeah, context yeah. switching all the time, right? Yeah. Yes. At our worst, I think we were co-managing five projects at the same time. Uh, so they also have autonomy in how they manage their time okay, to deliver yeah. what. Ah. Yeah, so they actually tell uh, mm. some of the project managers that I can't deliver that because I have these two other deadlines. Ah, uh, okay. So while they follow a leader, they also manage their time on their own. Mm. Yeah. Yes, how about you? How would you, um, what would you define as being productive and effective at work? Because as a startup, right, we're also like about 15, 20 people. Right? Uh, there's a lot of collaboration needed. As a salesperson, I need the help of the tech people like all the time because like mm. uh, there's so many technical questions, technical things that I, I need solved. Uh, so then I have to wait for Europe time or US time. Yeah. Oh. So, but but at the same time, I know that I cannot wait until Europe time and US time to work. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense, right? Yeah. yeah. Because then that leaves like a, at least a six hour gap yeah. that you know some Correct. clients or customers will like or like be blank or or just have no response. You know, mm-hmm. if I'm just waiting on everyone else. So I think what has been very helpful, I think, is like uh, communication and documentation, things that we don't uh, that's un- underappreciated like, pre flexibility, right? Pre COVID, I guess. Yeah. So uh, on communication, right? It means like. Um, you know, I guess in office it's very easy. I do my work. If I face some issues, I just turn to the guy mm. and say something, right? Yeah. But then having to like type out the exact issues, uh, give context, give your ask, she takes longer. give some recommendations. <laughs> Actually, it's even longer than yeah. than, True. than turn to the office. Hey, this is a problem. Come see, come see, come see my screen. Ah, okay. <laughs> then, then they understand the, the problem. Ah, I'll oh, fix really. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. no such thing, ma. Right, like in in super um, yeah, yeah. decentralized company. So mm. you have to communicate that very well. Right, exactly yep. what you're asking for. 
and sometimes uh, I, I made some mistakes early on, right? Um, so sometimes I'll say like, hey, I'm facing this issue. I didn't provide enough context, right? Facing this issue, I, I think hopefully morning I wake up will be soft, right? And then morning wake up, then they just ask oh, for more question. context. Oh, okay. Then tomorrow then <laughs> oh, soft. Oh, two working hours. days. Eh? Yeah. Because yeah. New York time, 12 hours apart from Singapore, right? Mm. I said, wow, need to wait two working days. So then I learned, okay, whenever I communicate, right, I need to spend extra thought into it. It suddenly becomes very high stakes. Yeah. Mm. I was like, I mm. communicate, I say the wrong thing, then they just ask clarify on the spot. Yeah, right? it's just but a now discussion. Like, you can have a discussion, yeah. but with your case, you can't. Exactly, yeah. So you really need to, uh, I guess, be proactive in communication. Right? Mm. I think it's like what you shared, like, right? About the project, when someone project managed, they need feedback back from the ground, right? If not, then things just get blocked or things just get shelved and forgotten or neglected. Yeah. Mm. And then the other thing is documentation, right? Meaning that once I ask the question already, right? It must be stored somewhere. Yeah, like the answer, right? It has to be uh, stored somewhere. Sometimes the answer is like from a few different people, there's whole discussion. Yeah. Then actually, the same problem might come up again next time or the same mm. question must come up again next time, uh. right? We need to document it somewhere, right? Such that yes. um, I can revisit this or a customer can revisit this so that, um, you know, we don't repeat this whole process over and over again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, actually, that's yeah. that's that's how we that's how we do, it. and I appreciate that a lot, right? It's very, I think it's very unique in American startup culture. This is something I, I heard uh, that's quite interesting between Western and Asian, right? A lot of Asian uh, uh, employees I've spoken to say, "Oh, better not to document. Why? Because right, if I document already, uh, they can fire me. <laughs> if I document already, they know how to do. Then they don't need to keep relying on oh me. Oh my god! Yeah. Really? Oh. No, really, I've heard this before. Like, oh, you know, oh. better not document. Uh, you know, all they're the relying changes. on me and my. Yeah. So now they, yeah, all my thoughts are up here. You know, <laughs> I am the kind of thing. So then they cannot let me go, right? Yeah. yeah. But then in like uh, Western culture, right, you are judged on like your documentation. Yeah. If you have no documentation, wow. your customers won't think of you highly. Sounds like you are on a mission to the moon so you got to be careful what you send back yeah, right? it's, yeah. it's kind of true it's gonna yeah. take some distance away mm. yeah that's just a very good analogy right mm. yeah. because it's literally takes 12 hours for my message to reach yeah. the other yeah. side yeah. Yeah. Nata how about your work setup um, would flexibility be something that is possible for you and your team for my particular role yes because like actually um, my role is quite like independent work mm. la. like there's some team work needed but it's mostly like just like coordination it's not so much like really discussions but I was just thinking about it when you were sharing right because I'm in a hybrid situation where like um it's like half work from home half work from office but I realized that that kind of I'm actually very unproductive on office days <laughs> yeah like legit this is unproductive reverse. in terms of yeah. like the like getting my work done because like some part of my work requires meetings, right? Yes. So I find that on my two office days, it ends up being extremely packed the entire day. You don't with meeting you after can't meeting work after at all. Yeah. So I'm like rarely at my table. I don't even have time to open my email, you know. So I like clear mm. my emails like yeah. after like work hours because like yeah. I have no time to, to sit down at my desk. So a lot of these things are meetings. Then I think also because like everybody kind of knows that we are like a hybrid situation. So like if I want to catch somebody face to face, yes, it's only these two on. days, right? Yeah. yeah, so sometimes if I have a lot of week to clear that week, right? I actually look forward to my work from home days because I can do work. Yeah. Can then focus. on my office days, I feel a bit like I may even have to OT to finish the yeah. work that I need to do on my own. La. So, yeah. so if you think about it, right? Actually, the two days you're talking about, the internal meetings, is yeah. like the communication and documentation time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's where you <laughs> true, like, collaborate, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I find that like from like past experiences, those times are usually quite ineffective because you sit there, listen to someone talk during a meeting. Number one, not everything pertains they to They don't you prepare la. one. <laughs> okay, not, they don't you prepare one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, but really, right? If you are forced to type something out, it forces you to Clarity think la. clearly yeah, yeah, and, yes. and concisely. Yes, yes. Because you don't want to type very long also. Ma. Yes. Yeah. And then number two, uh, <laughs> you don't have to listen to a podcast. You can just read the transcript if everyone just types it out, right? So there's a, you know, there's a value, not just to individual, like my life more productive, my work more productive, but to organization, right? I see how it's more productive. You don't need a meeting scribe. I mean, everyone, everybody's their own scribe. Oh, oh, actually, like, by this the way, could be an email. <laughs> this is AI age really. Uh, so actually all my meetings, right? I don't take notes. It's all AI transcribed one. So then we got transcript every meeting. Wow. Yeah, and then for us oh, yeah. that's very good. So we live and die by these tools also. Yeah. Mm. I tried that. Uh, they don't did, work for you guys. Um, is it because we're Singaporean? Maybe. Cannot. No, it's we, true. Yeah, but I, I, I could switch. Like, we I are not even it. grammatically yeah. accurate. We, 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 <laughs> we, yeah. I mean, yeah. like we mean Chinese as well along the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> we changed yeah. language. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. No, but I, I, I think like similar to Nata, right? Um, 
for my work, right, it's also very team-based. Mm. Uh, I'm in communication, so a lot of like uh, teamwork is needed to deliver a project together. But I also have um, a hybrid uh, work situation. So what is mm. flexible is um, the... Not so much the hours, but the um, the location. So some days you work from home, some days you work in office, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so I feel like um, we kind of like got into a groove where we sort of know our work from home days, right? Is is preparing like the work so that we can update yeah. uh, each oh. other on the office days. Okay. Yeah, but recently, right, um, uh, our team also came together to evaluate how effective are our meetings during office days. So we realized that actually... Um, even like organizationally, right, we also need to not just focus on, okay, office days, let's like discuss all that, but be very sharp also on mm. what are some of the things that we want to get keep in the meeting mm. so that everybody still has time to do work also mm. and not, you know, like Mata situation where we are actually clearing things outside of our working hours also. I have friends, right, who have older bosses who really force them to go into office every single day because they don't trust that. Mm. their employees will be productive at home. Yeah. Um, but to her, she's very sien la, because it's like, I go into office and then I'm just sitting there and I'm tired and you don't even engage me <laughs> in office. It's yeah. like the boss is in his room, then mm. the staff are all there and it's literally just to see me sitting at my desk working. Yeah. Um, but I guess this whole idea about remote working works on trust, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm curious for you, Sale, as an employer, like, was that hard for you in the beginning or even now? And then how did you navigate that? Mm. Mm. Firstly, I have no choice because we are <laughs> split across three countries. But that being said, um, I think it's actually better because, okay, I, I believe in, in Singapore, a lot of the bosses here, they operate a lot by these optics, right? Visibility. Mm. I can see my guys working, therefore they are working. Um, but uh, maybe in the States or other Western parts of the world, they focus more on results and and delivering the results together. Mm. So I think that's a better way of doing it. And of course, oh. culturally, there's different paths to that way as well. Uh, in my case, when I transited to an online uh, environment, uh, I have to focus a lot more on setting goals. La. Yeah. Now I'm trying to connect them to um, numbers that then make a real difference in mm. a business context, la, which is revenue and customer mm. satisfaction, right? Yeah. And maybe response time as well. Yeah. But uh, in that sense, then, um, I think in terms of building trust is really about uh, so I, what I've experienced is firstly I have to help them to understand why I'm doing this yeah, yeah. and bring them in on that shared goal mm. yeah and although they are introverts then they don't really when I share they don't express a lot of their response I can see in the things they talk about after that and what they ask me about they really take it on mm. to, to deliver on those values. Last. If there is anything that, uh, like different working styles, right. like they, they are not natural, not natural for them to respond quickly to the customer. Some of them prefer to have all the answers on hand first before they respond. Uh, uh, yeah, but we always tell them that um, the customers have an experience of, of us responding to them. Uh, if we are fast to that, you cannot assure them, that let them know that we, we are working on it and it gives us space for us to figure out what went wrong. Okay. Yeah, uh, so when you explain the rationale behind it, yeah. even though it's a very different style from what they're used to, your employees will try to adjust, is it? Yeah. To feel that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel what is good is that you um lay out for them um very clear factors on what mm. um I guess productivity and success looks like yep. for the whole team. Mm. Yeah. And then you let them try to figure out how to adjust, you know, based on um what is success factors to you to to meet those goals together. Hmm. Yeah, but to be honest, I think I'm still far from having a, a very good uh, success-driven organization. La. I think every organization has its path to take, right? So we're mm. still a bit away, but um, what I've learned is communicating well la. and to take mm. a, a, a page out of Lee, uh, Wesley's book is um, how to document that. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, at least for Singapore, we're moving towards um, most companies being at least flexi work in some form. La. So considering, let's say as an employer, right, if you are receiving um, fresh workers, people who are freshly out of school, this is their mm. first job, work ethic may be still in the midst of being formed, um, maybe non-existent. <laughs> then how do we, how, how would you manage that, you know, where this person comes in, you are supposed to form their work ethic to some degree as an employer, yeah. Yeah. but it's remote. Fresh grads. 
you must take notes now. Yeah. At this time. <laughs> <laughs> or employers <laughs> can <Yes>. take notes. <laughs> In, in, in our case, uh, what we practice is uh, firstly, putting them in front of a mentor. Mm. Yeah, so I think a lot mm. of the knowledge sharing is informal and having a mentor, True. a clear mentor is, is giving a pathway for questions to be asked or yeah. little corrections here and there to be yeah. made. Uh, at yeah. least uh, to fit this person into our working culture. Right? I think when we onboard a new hire, the question is always um, how different he is or she is to our working culture yeah. and can, can this person adapt uh, to mm. the way we work and some a lot of this is unspoken it's very, actually practice yeah, yeah. Yeah, so providing that safe space for them to just ask questions or to, to see role modeling I think it's very important so mm. recently I have experience of a new designer that came in um, sh- her culture in her old company is quite different from ours so we took a while to get that into speed and uh, what we experienced is that wow she's very efficient now mm. wow. she's very grateful uh, that she's able to work with this mentor yeah, and stuff yeah. like that yeah. Other than that is, um, even as a small company, we try to have a proper onboarding process. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we set yeah. our expectations right, short term, mid term, long term, oh. and also give yeah. them space to uh, share with us what they are thinking of, like why are they here, what are they looking to, to do with us as well. So in doing all those things, um, I think there's room for talking about work ethics. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, other than That's that, great. it's about just communicating things that are not working. Uh. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's a day-to-day um, communications la, that will build up that work yeah. ethic. Mm. Yeah, at the end of the day, in our case, la, it's very relational. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's not like guidebook rules. Follow it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's like, hey, this, uh, this situation here, uh, maybe it'll be better if it's this way. As a, I mean, you're not really a fresh, fresh grad, but mm. you work for maybe two, two three, yeah, yeah, two years, right? So, like, how would you advise? You know, like, I guess younger people that are going to the workforce about how to form like a good work ethic mm. such mm. that it will serve you know the the company and the em- the team the employ your employers well yeah in a flexible work arrangement like how do you build that trust yeah i think i think i'm quite i'm quite in a unique position right because um from the first ever time i started internship even in university like it was already like locked down you know, mm, right. so yeah, the COVID yeah, worker. Exactly. So like there was no, I guess, playbook yet, like formula to or this yeah, is what good yeah. work ethic looks yeah. like. Mm. Because for many years, right, good work True. ethic just shows what looks like showing up on time, uh, mm. leaving not on time exactly, but <laughs> 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 later than the boss. Right, yeah, a bit later <laughs> yeah, than the boss. Right. Last time, my right. like my past company, the contract yeah. right is like the this is your official working hours, but you will be required to do. Yeah, you um, might be required. Go above and yeah, beyond. No, I've had a contract like that literally before. So <laughs> we think about work ethic now, right? Suddenly, like in my generation, like all yeah. the forms had to be retaught. You know, mm. True. like oh, suddenly, like okay, punctuality still important, but you don't see that because there's no office. Uh, showing up. Uh, how long? How many hours you work? All these kind of classic, yes, indicators, right? Yeah. So then we do like I guess at least for me personally, I do like rethink, refigure what is work ethic even right it's, a, it's quite a broad word yeah there's this i guess pretty um good metaphor i think about right um, a metaphor between like a, a shepherd and a hired hand mm. right like a shepherd is someone who actually like owns the sheep hired hand is someone you know paid to take care of the sheep right and then when the wolf come right uh you know what happens what how do they behave differently the high hand thinks okay you know i'm not paid enough for this right i'm, I'm, I'm above gone. my grip, I'm grade. Least, above my pay grade man yeah. you know this kind of things i'm done right yeah. uh and then the shepherd is like okay i you know i'm gonna fight this roof right mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's the heart of like work ethic right uh, and for our generation it's very important to think about because suddenly all the indicators are gone right we have to then lean back on what the posture is and if the shep- and I think the difference between the shepherd and the higher hand in this metaphor right is that the shepherd has ownership mm. yeah and that's always been I guess what uh, the core principle is right yeah why I show up on time at work why I leave later than my boss it's because I, I own this thing right why I work extra hours it's because I own something that I don't mind working extra hours for because I'm not doing it for the money right that's what it's been pointing to I'm not saying we should work uh, a lot of hours but yeah. I think that's what the core principle has always been right? I'm not just doing it for the money right but I own this role I own this job yeah and if mm. I really do that right I think the way I work looks very different mm. yeah even if I'm flexible and I'm flexible time right work any hours flexible place I got unlimited leave also actually I can take as many <laughs> as I want right but I think I still work more than maybe a normal 9 to 5 worker. Yeah. yeah. And you're not calculative about your time. 
No, I didn't calculate at all. <laughs> yeah, but okay, that's that's a different issue. <laughs> Come yeah, back yeah, for the thought, next yeah, episode. Yeah, episode. Am I a workaholic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recovering workaholic. Yeah, recovering workaholic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but I think yeah, that, that ownership is I you know when we talk about employers' trust and all that, right? I think if you get a sense that your employee owns their role, right? If one day you see your employee, mm. wow, I lost this deal and I cried, right? You know what? This person you know, really, really owned, value. Yeah, really valued it. It will, it will, I think, uh, assure you more than the person showing up on time every day. Okay, mm. maybe, I don't know, but it's like show, working extra hours, a few extra hours, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what everyone, every employer wants because employers own the <coughs> business. They just want people to own it with them. Yeah. Mm. I think when you find people like that, you know, all the trust issues very easy to dissipate. Yeah. We're, and, and we don't yeah. keep looking out for the forms like oh look over their shoulder what they're doing how many hours we just need people to have a sense that we just need to have a sense as employers right to have a sense that the people we are running with own it with me also mm. yeah, yeah the, the, the reverse is also true though so yeah. if you are watching out for my business for example right yeah. I think it is very important for me to watch out for you mm. yeah so are you being overworked are yeah. you facing challenges that um, you know might not be necessary yeah, and how can I support you or unblock you? Because uh, business owners have in a very great position to introduce processes, mm. to make yeah. changes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, to even sometimes protect themselves against um, maybe clients who are uh, behaving in a way that is not ideal. Mm. Yeah, so I think there's a two way thing happening here. Yeah, oh. yeah. So yeah. I think that that's the best outcome we can have. I think la. yeah, I yeah. think that is the I guess perfect uh, employer employer employee relationship yeah. yeah, which I think is very lost in today's yeah. world, right? People, the, the, the dynamic people always think is like, employee want more from you, employee trying to give less. You know, it's always yeah. like that. But actually, if the employee owns the role, right? I think that there is a, there's very few employers that will exploit you even further and take advantage of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What if we live in a self-interested world where people are not so selfless? You know what I mean? Like, mm. what if as a worker, I just don't really care. Like, I only care about myself. Yeah, that's actually employer, not I just care about my that yeah. goes to work wants to do a very excellent job. Yeah, yeah if I'm the bare minimum earn. kind of person, then... But but you are not, ma. Because when you're bare minimum about some things, there are some things you're not bare minimum about. Like your mm-hmm. comfort, maybe you're not bare minimum about. Mm-hmm, or like, okay. there are yeah. some things you won't be bare minimum about. I mean, ideally, you work in a place where, you know, you care enough about the thing you're doing, what you're building, that yeah. you won't just be bare minimum about it. If you're not, then don't put your, don't apply la, for the job as, as well as it pays, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, I think that issue there is deeper than um, about the job itself. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a disconnection there somewhere. That being said, I think culture plays a big part as well. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes people don't care because they feel, why should I care? The, yeah. And doesn't that, right, make a difference anyway. Yeah, and I, th- yeah. For, for culture-wise, I appreciate the office days. Mm. Even though I love working at mm. home, I love to like do my laundry <laughs> in a day rather than come back at night and see the pile there. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, but I like going to office because I can be physically with people whose uh, work ethics and all I can actually see. Yeah, and it, it rubs off on me also. Mm. And sometimes the trust also, and I guess the camaraderie la, comes from uh, physically uh, interacting with the people mm. also. Mm. Yeah, mm. so culture yeah. does play a part, and maybe there is still space also for certain fixed um, days, you know, that you come into the office. Mm. Things are balanced. I, f- I feel that too, though, even in remote, remote settings. Yeah, how yeah. do you all like build camaraderie? And yeah, I, I think so. We still have like bi weekly things, right? Like the bi weekly, like internal meetings. We will come together, update about what we've done. Um, and then also at the end, like, you know, we will like give kudos to each other, right? Like shout outs, we call oh. it. And then we will also like share memes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, meme, the memes quite funny one. Like, I really <laughs> laugh until like, I tear before at the memes. Actually, it caused even more admiration. When I see some of my teammates, right? They are very like, uh, what, do you, how, what do you call it? Is it like exothermic? Like they give up like mm. energy, that mm. kind of thing, right? You know, for example, they're like, oh, happy Friday, everybody. Then on the calls, they're like very vibrant. Happy, I don't even yeah, see their really face, eh, but like, they're very energetic. Tell. Yeah, then they will like, help each other up. They, and they never meet each other in person before, some of wow. them. Yeah, this kind of thing. I suddenly feel like, oh, wow. There are people that actually care, even though we don't see each other physically, but we are bounded by this like mission. Mm. Yeah, I don't need them to be like good friends with me, but I feel like they're very good like comrades, mm. you know? And oh, that, that's gives, amazing. that gives me like, yeah, that, that motivates me also. 
as a remote team. Uh, so it's quite interesting to hear your experiences, Wesley, mm, because mm. we also don't see each other um, and maybe only once a year or twice a year. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so then how do we help them see each other as uh, not just workers working on the same uh, project, right? Mm. But also read each other as people. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. What, what we do is we uh, try to spend a bit more time on uh, talking about things outside of work. Mm. Yeah. Especially that from, a, from an empl- employee to an employer, I have a question, right? Because, I mean, remote people may not see you as often, right? Um, mm. And somehow, you know, I think you're on the, you say you're introvert, you're on the more stoic side as a person, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. right? Uh, less expressive, la, mm. right? Like as an employee sometimes, right? In a remote setting, I wonder like what my boss thinks of me or of my work, you know, like I submit something, then like mm. I, if I, you know, in the past can still see the face, see the reaction, right? Mm. Can still get that tone, that kind of, for example, yeah, right? Yeah, I ever like. tell somebody like, like, oh, I've done this, 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 then the person, okay, dot, dot. I said, oh, <laughs> oh, no, oh my gosh. What's that? It's like, like oh, okay. Like you did all this, like, okay. Or is it like, yeah. okay. Yeah, but yeah, but actually, I don't know why the dot dot is the there. Okay, to be honest, right? I don't know why the dot dot is there. But you live in the SMS yeah, yeah, generation. Yeah. Three correct, dots correct. Yeah, being able to gauge how happy my boss is with me, right? Like mm. it's a sense that we, it's, it's, it's a place I derive job security from, at some, mm. you know, mm. in some measure, mm. la, mm. Right. So I'm, I'm just wondering if that has that has ever come up, you know? Yeah. Uh, do you like, actually, boss, what do you think of me? Can you say something? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, people ask you to be more expressive and all that. Yeah. Very rare because <laughs> most they of my like teammates la, but are introverts. Or uh, I don't know if that's an indicator, la, but they yeah. tend to want to hear from you rather than ask and and have you answer mm. that's that's my experience mm. yeah. very scared to yeah. ask I think when yeah. I first started yeah. out work but, but yeah. I, yeah. I think all employees would think that yeah. well, you will just guess off based yeah, on how but, your but boss you cannot has guess been. if you're not in office what? see the email response oh. <laughs> no uh, no but that's why I lost then always I can guess because email very professional so I think that falls into the the leaders taking care of the guys in the team mm. so mm. in our case um, I think as a person also la, I practice a lot of affirmation wow. uh, I think that's my love language if you will words ah yeah, so mm. if I see something that, wow, this is really impressive. I want to make mm. sure that the whole team knows. Wow, well, frame it yeah. up. Wow. Yeah. And I, I uh, frame it up. Uh. It's like <laughs> a five-year-old <laughs> take, take a screenshot. Yeah, a screenshot, yeah. a screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Digital, digital age. Yeah, yeah but um, I, at first when I'm doing this, I just want to make sure that they feel valued. Uh. Yeah. But over time, they mm. shared that yeah, this affirmation has helped them a lot. Oh. Yeah, so they, they actually want that they are looking for it yeah. uh, but sometimes mm. they just not in the position to ask like, whether it's because of they are shy or what so I think it is the responsibility of business owners to take the active step yeah. or make sure they are leaders yes. affirm yeah. your employees more yes, yes it please. helps a lot you yeah. really yeah. 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 Also, yeah. 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 and also for performance ma. because if you're only only ever told on what like you're doing once. badly, mm. yeah, yeah. Then there's no reinforcement on the positive side. So yeah, that's yeah, the, right. and, and it's not true, right? Because yeah. we, okay, we always focus on how to improve, yeah. but it kind of uh, affects productivity actually. Yeah, you tear down confidence, yeah. but you don't actually build any culture. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. 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 But that being said, oh, I think making your boss happy is not the right way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the boss yeah. may not be right all the time. But sometimes right. you will gauge, yeah. you try and gauge it, right? Yeah, yeah, Ooh, correct, correct. Another yeah. topic for another day. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it takes a very <laughs> secure boss, eh, an emotionally yeah. attuned boss to know how to admit that you're not right all the time and like mm. want to get feedback, yeah. want to consider nurturing your workers. Yeah. You know, so. New way of building trust, I think. Yeah, but I do think that if you really want to lead younger workers, it's, it's, more important now la, yes. to have some of these qualities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, lo, so. yeah. It seems like today um, we started out talking about um, whether uh, having flexible work arrangements will impact our work productivity. Mm. But it seems like through our conversations, uh, there are other factors that actually do impact yeah. what productivity is, right? We, a big one that we talked about was um, work ethics, mm. like that is very dependent on how we personally see and value attribute value to um the work that we do we talked mm. about ownership versus hired hand yeah yeah and we also talked about um how trust is a two-way thing yeah yeah, yeah and culture is something that can be built both in the office physically and also yeah. remotely mm. so that was really cool I, I think what um you both are doing is something that i think all of us can learn from also whether we are uh employees or employers yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so also feel you are thought. very wholesome employers and employees. Eh. <laughs> like, I mean, that's why I asked that that question, right? Because I feel like 
the way you like say you talk about how you see your employees and then where's for how, how you want to support your employers i feel it really does come from a place where you're not just thinking about your own interests in this situation mm. and perhaps that is what makes this work you know mm. yeah makes like you're able work. to wow. really find satisfaction um in the work you do in the company you're in finding your your position in the culture even in a remote situation because yeah. you're not just considering your own benefit lah yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so maybe that's a food for thought for all of us out there that, you know, are thinking about how to approach work in mm. general. Yeah. But thank you so much, Wes and Sale, for coming on the show to share your experience about uh, remote flexible work arrangements and what uh, productivity really looks like uh, mm. uh, on a day-to-day basis for you. And, you know, um, for all of viewers out there, uh, we hope that this episode really gave you some things to think about when, on how we can approach work, whether you yeah. are a boss or an employee. And, um, yeah, we hope to get you guys back again for more work-related episodes. Yeah, yeah if you like them, so please comment sure. in, our, in our socials and also in our YouTube channel uh, comment box below yeah so if you like our content uh, please share it with someone that you think will be really helpful for them and you can also find us on YouTube Spotify and Apple Podcasts and you can also find us on socials on TikTok and Instagram at ngl.people we have a Telegram channel where we post um, behind the scenes footage of our filming and we also post updates about our parties and in-person gatherings so you can find us on Telegram and join us for an in-person gathering soon So so with that, we've come to the end of today's episode. Thank you for joining us and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Work hard. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Back to work. Back to work. (laughs) 